Greetings, friends. Uh, welcome to our first night. Well, I guess this is the first video for our first night of confirmation. Uh, glad to be gathering together again to chat about this stuff and join together in our journeys of faith. Tonight, I want to talk to you a bit about covenants. Now, covenant or covenanting is one of those fancy kind of church words. I don't know if you uh, would have had an opportunity to hear about it before, but if you have, you would know that it is um, it's similar to like a contract for what we would probably be familiar with. It cre it's a it's like a legal um, established agreement uh, that creates the basis for how the involved parties will be in relationship with one another moving forward. Um, an example that would probably be most familiar for us uh, in our in the world we live in would be marriage. Marriage is a is a covenantal relationship about how um, two adults decide that they want to commit their lives to one another and um, kind of establish within the covenant of, of their marriage how they will live and support one another um, and, and the promises that they make to one another in that. And so covenantal language is important because it creates the framework within all of scripture, but particularly, you know, uh, in the Old Testament of God's relationship with God's people, and then those understandings shape and inform how the New Testament authors understood Jesus' revelation of uh, the fullness of God's love and faithfulness to humanity, and, and saw how in Jesus um, God fulfilled the covenants that God had made with God's people. You know, we scripture it's it's this love story between god and humankind and one of the things revealed within the stories of scripture is that god is a covenant making covenant keeping and covenant fulfilling god god makes promises to god's people and god makes good on those promises and so just again some examples in genesis 9 god makes a covenant with noah after the flood uh, promising the preservation of humanity and, and the rainbow is given as a sign of remembrance of this covenant between God and Noah and humankind. In Genesis 12 and 15, God makes covenants with Abraham, making these promises that um, as Abraham makes God his God, that God would bless Abraham with land and descendants and these blessings that would make Abraham and Abraham's family a blessing to all the nations. In Exodus 19 and 24, God makes further covenants with his people, the Israelites, uh, giving them laws that would shape them as God's people and guide them to the blessings of life that God desires for humankind. In 2 Samuel 7, God makes covenant with David, that making a promise that one of David's descendants would reign over the people of God. And this covenant with David shapes the Israelites' expectation of a Messiah that would come one day uh, and lead them and guide them. And um, the significance of this, com of this covenant you know, is what the gospel writers are pointing at when they make efforts to um, refer to Jesus as the son of David, to show again how Jesus is the fulfillment of this covenant that God has made with God's people. You know, and again, in Luke 30, or, um, in Jeremiah 31, and in Luke 22, kind of these, these echoes between the Old Testament and then into the New Testament of this covenant that gets instituted through Christ. In Jeremiah 31, uh, it says, you know, God is speaking to people and says, I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest, declares the Lord. For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. And then later in you know, Luke 22, this is what Jesus is pointing to. And he says, in the same way, after supper, he took a cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. You know, this understanding of of covenants, of promises between God and God's people, and God making good on those promises shapes the understanding of who we understand God to be, both in the Old Testament and through in the New Testament, and here today. 
Now, for some of you uh, who were with us last year, you might be saying, Pastor Joe, what's with all this covenant stuff? Didn't we run through all the Bible stuff last year? Um, and the reason that I want to kick off this year with drawing back out you know, some reminders about these different points throughout Scripture where we hear this covenantal language is because being Christian, being a follower of Christ, is a way of life. It's how we're in relationship with God as God's people, as members of the body of Christ here on earth. You know, our faith, it isn't just this collection of beliefs that we either agree with or disagree with, and whether or not we go to church on Sundays. Our Christian faith is about how we seek to live every day of our lives, leaning into Christ's calling to love God and to love our neighbors as ourselves. And so this year, we are going to invest our time in highlighting some of the lived practices and disciplines that you can use to strengthen your own relationship with God and help guide you on your journey in your walk in the way of Christ. We're going to spend some time talking about Martin Luther and about how our religious heritage within the ELCA shapes and informs our understanding of what it means to be God's people here today. We're going to work through uh, Luther's small catechism, his descriptions of how families were to understand the gifts of the commandments and the sacraments as they applied to their lives in their time. And we'll work together to connect some dots for how we see our faith calling us to faithfully follow God in our time. And so this hopefully gives you a little bit of a sense of where we're looking to go this year uh, with our confirmation year together. But let me tell you up front, friends, um, especially in this time of physical distancing as we're leaning even more and more into um, our community through this digitally mediated form of engagement, that you are probably going to get about as much out of this year as you decide to put into it. You know, I, I've used a few times tonight that metaphor of our faith being this journey that we are on together this walk, this marathon, this race that we are running, um, seeking to follow after Christ's leading us on this way. And we might all, you know, join in and say like, yeah, we're all here for it. We're all here to run this race together. We're all here to take this journey together. Um, but if you, if you say yes to that and then get to the starting line and say like, well, you know, I, I mean, I'll start taking some steps later. Like I've got other, I've got other things to do. I've got other things that, you know, I need to focus my time on. Uh, like I'll, I'll, I'll walk, I'll, I'll run, I'll, I'll, you know, however I want to move down this, this path, this journey, like ah, it's there, it's waiting for me. I'll get to it eventually. But this, this stuff first, um, if, if that's the way that you engage with your faith, don't be surprised if it feels like you aren't going anywhere meaningful or significant. Don't be surprised if it feels like you just spend your time hanging out at that storyline. It's like, well, what, how, why does any of this matter? It doesn't look like it makes a difference. It, it, my invitation to you, my hope and my promise for you is that if you lean into seeking after the way that God is speaking to you, calling to you here today and every day, that the Holy Spirit is present at work, moving in our lives and inviting us on this journey together. And so we're on this journey together. Let us go, friends, and see what the Lord is doing. Thanks be to God.